Oh, wait, oh, we're good? Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure. Okay, um, I would like to call the Town of Columbia Beach Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission uh, meeting to order May 2nd, 2023. A little bit different of a time, so thank you everybody for your flexibility in uh, changing this. Um, first off, can we uh, have a roll call of our members and then if you have any announcements? Uh, Mike Monis, I have no announcements. Okay, uh, Karen Grisovich, uh, two announcements. Uh, the farmer's market is in full swing in Colonial Buds, and that is a collaborative partnership with the uh, Columbia Beach Farmer's Markets, Parks and Rec, and Colonial Buds, and also the uh, Volunteer Fire Department. They are gracious enough to let us park um, over in their lot while the market is happening. Second announcement, I know she was recognized publicly at the um, town council meeting, but I would just like to, on behalf of all of us, thank Eileen Keith for being such a wonderful part of this commission um, in its infancy stages and all the hard work that she put in over her time on this commission. And um, I'm thrilled that she isn't one and done that there's all kinds of programming and things that she wants to add to what we already have going on. So. Well done. Lisa, said was no analysis. Uh, Kenneth Allison, uh, Parks and Recreation Liaison, uh, no analysis at this time. Uh, Sally Adams, Interim Parks and Rec director, director, and I will have something in a report later. Perfect. Okay, at this time, number three, do we have any additions to the agenda? Or any changes we want to make in it? Okay. Um, I would call that the agenda be approved as written. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, the agenda is approved. Okay, um, at this time, I would like to call for approval of our minutes from the March 7th uh, meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The minutes are approved. Um, at this time, do we have, uh, I don't think we have any introductions or citizen input, but I know uh, Debbie, you'll be part of what we do when we move into the next section of things. Can do that. Uh, number seven, council report. So I don't have anything to report as of today. Um, we will have a town council meeting tomorrow um, that will discuss, and I'm sure Sally will have more information in terms of the upcoming um, surveys and items like that for the Parks and Rec Master Plan. So I'm sure that's part of her report, so I'll be back to her. Um, can I ask you one question at this time that's just come up? I know we as Parks and Rec do not oversee the beaches, but we see oversee activities on the beaches. Could you kind of give us just a little bit of what's going on out there because it's a lot of sand and it looks awesome and it looks like it's going to be amazing so part of the um uh, i guess you would call uh, erosion um areas on the beach they are beeping up the breakpoints that's what it's called I could be wrong with that but basically putting additional rocks where the previous rocks were already there expanding it to I believe 10 feet and going up three feet. Again, could be completely wrong on that too. Um, I 
apologies, my brain is still in Disney. <laughs> um, but uh, it's essentially to help the erosion of the beach uh, front area. Um, they are adding additional sand, um, adding the rocks. So hopefully when we get the storms, hopefully we don't get any more 100 year storms. But if we get those, it will alleviate some of the sand retracting back into the water to, to be able to uh, cut down the cost of replenishing the beach sand every single year. And, and you may not have the answer for this, and that's okay, but it's just another one of the questions that has been asked sure. is, um, is that going to happen like down at South Beach also? It's going to be a phased approach. Uh, currently right now, the main focus has been on the beachfront sure. where it is on Irving. Um, but the, the process is to update all of those in a phased approach as time, money, yada, yada, as things happen. So. Well, and again, we can put this in when we go to council recommendations. One of the things that, that has brought been brought to my attention in regard to all of it, which is it's a wonderful, wonderful thing happening. But you know, there are all these beach closed signs there, and all week long, there were people on the beach, there were people climbing around the equipment, there were people up and down the piles of sand. You know, you know, part part of it is is a safety concern. Sure. Of, Yay, we want people to enjoy the beach. Um, and yay, we had those COVID beach closed <laughs> old signs. But you know, if it's not being enforced, and those of us who, who are here as residents are trying to be respectful of that, sure. you know, there needs to be a balance in that. So right. it's just an observation that has been multiple times oh. brought to my attention, which understood, and I believe the town manager is aware of that. Okay. Any other questions for Kenny? Okay. Uh, director's report. Sally. Okay. Um, we have a couple of things coming up on the calendar. One of them, um, we had, oh, sorry. Last week we had a Tuesday night grown up game night. The first grown up game night we did was poker. This last one was Mahjong, and there are a group of Mahjong players who meet here at the library. And they, uh, one of them is my neighbor, and I asked her if the group might be willing to come and play Mahjong with grown-ups. And they, we had about 20 people show up. It was a wonderful, fun night. I think Lisa did go to the poker night, so she's familiar with what grown-up game night looks like. Um, it was a blast. We had a lot of fun, and we might do it again. Um, I don't know what y'all think about that. We're going to try and do another family game night in June on Flag Day. And that is uh, because Bill Taylor collects flags and offered to give us some flags and teach people how to fold their flags. So we're going to do a, a flag. And I know you and Doug, Karen, have donated so many of the flags and put them up that are on the, uh, that might be a, a neat thing. If, if I haven't asked you personally, but it would be nice no, to, to talk about it. it. And, and we're working with the American Legion to get them to be the fiscal agent and the sponsor of the California Beach oh, Flag right. Project so that there is somebody that has vested interest in it. Yeah. And the 200 plus flags that went up and the maintenance of those flags doesn't fall on Doug, Two myself, people. Scott, and Dan. So, right. yeah. Okay. But, Great. Well, maybe if you were available for that, maybe you could come and talk to people about it. Or, yeah. And we're in the middle of like setting up the planning pieces of that right now. So. Okay, cool. Well, that is uh, the day before actual flag day, or right. Tuesday before the actual flag day. Okay. Um, the Eleanor Park community meeting is scheduled for May 15th at 530 to 7 o'clock. It's going to be held here in this room. And our goal in that we had over 400 responses to the survey, which was even more than we had for the last survey, and they were wowed by the fact that our small town is responding to surveys. So, Alan Park. That's so was that said. initiated by Barry Dunn? Yes. Okay. That's, that's what I was making sure, but that wasn't, that wasn't clear to me on the survey. Oh, no, okay. it was not us. Uh, I think India had talked to him about the importance of, of Eleanor Park to the community, and so in that conversation, they had suggested another, putting okay. up another survey and having another meeting, and we thought that would be a really good idea before you surprise people with what's happening because we have the benches and all of that mm -hmm. to, to mix it. And they're very, they're totally aware, trust, trust that they have talked to everybody about this, including you all. So, um, 
but it is an opportunity to uh, work out those things. And I know I've sent emails to you all about, um, actually it's to the two leadership's positions in, on the council because you guys are chair and vice chair to talk to James Mickle about bylaws, but that's a separate issue. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, then I uh, got a message from Eileen that she is interested in continuing with the tennis program, which is great. So we're going to have some tennis this summer. The beaches, we're in conversation and with the master plan coming out, this will be more a part of the conversation. But that came up in some of the earlier, sur or not or surveys, but in some of the earlier conversations was whether or not the beaches could be folded into the Parks and Rec Department. Not upkeep of the beaches, but, but programming. programming and policy making. Okay. Um, in terms of policies on the beach, uh, I, I feel like I could um, I would like to recommend to the board or to the commission that you all take on policies, and I have some notes on that sort of thing. But if we can maybe have a have a some sort of closed meeting or something where we can talk about some of these policies, because uh -huh. there are a few things regarding rental of some of the smaller parks and what that should look like and how we should handle it. And I had a, a question come up about whether or not they could have alcohol in the parks and we don't have any policies regarding alcohol in the parks. Okay. So I feel like we probably need to address some of those. Okay. Um, and uh, Karen, you had suggested, I'm sorry, this research, you had suggested a summer family camp out. As soon as we finish with this Eleanor Park survey, I would like to um, put something together that would look like a summer camp out possibly in July. Okay. It would be really hot, but it would be an evening event. Sure. Evening and overnight and uh, see what that would look like. Okay. So, um, other than that, I'm deeply into events, which doesn't impact this commission. That's where I am right now. <laughs> well, and, and again, I, and I, we appreciate all that you're doing, and thank you for taking on this role as you have with all that you have going on in your life. And we all understand your family comes first and totally have a huge amount of respect and understanding for that. The one thing that I do think, especially now that we're moving into summer season, is if we could go back and develop a mode of communication where like on, and again, not to add to your plate, but that if we just had a bullet pointed list that came out every other Friday for us, that we knew, okay, these are the events going on, these are the things that are happening um, that we could respond back to, or that, you know, these are some of the, so, so that that communication is, is I, open line. Yeah, I had started to do that, and I had some feedback that it was too long, and I, I was concerned that maybe I was doing too much, there was too much information. So maybe we can talk about what you want that to look like. I mean, I don't think there's ever such thing as too much information, especially when we're going into season where the out of town folks are gonna be coming in and they're gonna say, oh, you're on this commission, you're on this. Yeah, you I mean, should know what's going on. Yeah. I think, I think. I mean, if it's, even if it's just, just quarterly, I think it's like, we don't have to have the entire season. I think having something so, it's manageable for you and, and we can absorb it. Um, but in reference to two part, four parts of that, you're talking about you're already working on activities. Um, do any of those include like movie nights? Yes. Could we, I mean, this is my recommendation since it's the Elmore, Eleanor Park survey, Eleanor Park discussion is happening. Could we encourage to have more activities at Eleanor, Eleanor Park so people can see that it's actually open. It's not closed anymore. Yes. Yes. So that maybe the movies there, like your family camp out, those yes. type of things, have them there so people can see that the, the, the uses of it. So that's yes, all. absolutely. Well, I mean, that same strain this is something that we were thinking about and talking. And I don't know, if, Kenny, if this needs to be a recommendation that we make to council. I would like to recommend that the, I don't know if there's six of them sitting up there, picnic tables on Town Hill temporarily be moved to Elmer Park and some trash cans there so that it does have a presence of this is inviting, this is for everyone. Um, you know, let's face it, people are, for events, people might use them where they're sitting right now, but because that is not a food truck, court area, etc., 
we have them. No, they're not the prettiest things in the world, but at least it would be a start of having activity in that space that doesn't cost any anything other than maybe getting two trash cans and moving them from point A to point B that is not that far. Right. I, I don't have the authority to say yes to that. That's what and that's we're asking. We're gonna put that towards Kenny. Yeah, yeah. Towards okay, so I'll I'll make that one get to the record. I second as well to agree. Great I, idea. I, to put to put in what information I do have, I will say if if you would be willing to wait until after this meeting on the fifteenth because it's going to focus specifically on Eleanor Park. Um, that's what that meeting is going to be about. Sure, but but again, you're coming into this discussion. We've been discussing it five years sitting right here. Now. So so again, not not to to disparage you at all, Sally, but it's right. just part of we've got them. They're there. Why are they just sitting? You know, and it, and it would appease this summer. But again, we'll, we'll get to that when we make um, the recommendations. My one only other thing that I would like to say about that you could do for our budget and things, um, we really, really need a new volleyball net. I think they're like $75, and they usually last the season, but there really needs to be a new volleyball net at the beach volleyball site. So, um, and then I'm happy to meet. I know Mike had some things with his schedule, whatever. I can meet that day with those folks anytime. Okay. It, that, they're only going to be in town at a certain time, so it would be between 3.30 and 5.30 at a certain time, and then that works for I can do whatever that day, I'll just, because I'll be here you, for you that. You have the email. You know yes, what? so I'll answer you back that, and we can set that up. Okay, cool. Okay. Any other things for no. Sally, y'all? Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to committee reports. I think y'all have a new name. We do. Okay. We Ms. do. Debbie? So we voted. Um, there were two of us there the day we voted. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this appeases everyone. We will now be called the Colonial Beach Explorers. And I think that's a very inclusive name and it sort of sounds fun. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, so I tried to go back and look at um, what we did in March. Your voice is very clear. Just so. Okay. <laughs> and I actually forgot one of the things we did. So in March, we did the March coffee walk which was part of St. Patrick's Day weekend, coffee shop to coffee shop. And then some people left at the second coffee shop and some walked back to the first. Um, everybody who came along who wanted one was able to get a medal from our medal rack that we had there. And um, adults get very excited by bling. So um, people walked away with bling. We did have about a dozen folks that came out that morning at eight o'clock. And then we had maybe like four others that showed up before we were finished um, at 9.30. So they were also able to participate. We also did in March that I forgot about, we did the Shamrock painting. Oh, which was a weekend event and we had one whole family that was from out of town. Okay, awesome. Yes, and then we had another in-town family, uh, <laughs> grandma with her granddaughter who came specifically that day she got dropped off to be with grandma to come and paint rocks. So as far as I know at this point too, there are rocks hidden in the community center green area that people can still find. Um, we did the walk to sunrise on April 15th. Um, we just had a few participants in that and a lot of people were already down the street volunteering at the Osprey festival. Um, and it was, intentional that it was to sunrise. So um, for some folks, 6.30 was a little early, um, but we we still did it. Um, in May, we have planned, because people started coming and asking, um, we talked about the coffee walks and maybe this should be a regular thing. So in order to just make it logical and easier, we decided we would do it on Art Walk Fridays. So that morning, you can start your art walk weekend by taking a coffee walk. 
And the same thing. And for now, we're going to do the same thing from coffee shop to coffee shop because parking is easy up there. You get that. So we'll be doing that one on May 12th. On May 19th, we will have the inclusion intermission meeting. And for this month only, it will be held here in the library. And um, we actually will be working with the library staff, with the librarians on, we're looking at doing a literacy-based walk, one in June and one in July that will be family oriented. So these will be afternoon walks and we're gonna work together with their staff on those. Um, coming in June, we'll do <coughs> the coffee walk again on the second Friday. And then on June 24th, that's not from 1 to 12, from 10 to 12 at Torrey Smith Park, we are going to do an Art for All Adopt a Park um, event. So at Torrey Smith Park, we will have, we're talking 8 to 10 art stations that we will set up outside and we'll have volunteers to assist. But the plan is that we will have no matter what your skill level, when you come, there will be a station that is set up to handle your needs. And then inclusion intermission will be on June 16th back at the community center. We're looking into July and because the rock painting went really well, we discovered that national rock day is July 13th. Okay. Who knew? I certainly didn't, but there is a rock day. So on um, July 13th at the community center from 5 to 7 p.m., we will do an outside rock painting event. Um, and we're looking at maybe being able to bring some refreshments to that one since it will be um, around dinner time. We will do the July coffee walk on July 14th. Then inclusion intermission will be July 21st. And then we're putting together a project that could be very exciting. Um, so in July, we're looking at doing an oyster treasure hunt. So we're working with four, two people are confirmed right now, but we're looking at four of the town artists who are going to decorate oyster shells. Those shells will be displayed at the Beach Paws Boutique because she is open seven days a week and she's going to set up a display in the window from July 4th to July 14th. And we've talked about it and we think probably the Dora map will be the easiest to use because it's already done and we have copies of it. So in that Dora map area, some of us will be hiding 88 oyster shells that will be painted gold. When you find a gold oyster shell, you're going to go to Beach Paws and then you can take home a uniquely made oyster shell by a local artist. Nice. And so that um, we'll get a lot more details down the road. But we did pick 88 to represent the radio station. We thought that would be a nice tie in. So that's kind of where we stand at the moment. I have a, a question. Yes. So for the and this is kind of a clarification thing for the rock paintings and these uh, community events that you are putting on and doing are we as parks and rec helping with the cost of supplies and those kinds of things for that yes <coughs> okay great mm -hmm. it's wonderful well thank you thank, thank you thank you no it's amazing so much stuff in such a short amount of time since y'all started meeting and doing things I love that. I love that it's including everybody. So, Debbie's thank you. been an amazing partner. She comes to the office and puts all these ideas are there, and it's just exciting. <coughs> well, that kind of rolls into you know this whole idea of collaborative partnerships that we've been talking about and having recognized entities, kind of like um, you know I think we really do need to iron out a lot of what's going on with us that uh, green space does need to have some presence and role monthly at our meeting too just as they do um but it leads into the um columbia youth athletics association sally yes um 
I am, I have got interest, interest from a lot of different places, and now I've got a list, and I would like to set up a meeting, but I also wanted to ask if you all would like to be at the meeting, or if you would like them to meet with maybe one person from the commission, or I'm not sure, because I have a list of about 12 names of people that I've talked, I've talked with all of them to see if they're interested, and they are, and and, and interested in, and I guess the interested in revitalizing in this. Yeah, and, a revival of CDYAA with the understanding that Parks and Rec cannot run it, we can facilitate. Because so they I, would be a collaborative partner just like we are yeah. with the CB Explorers, just yeah. like we would be with Green Space, we'd be a support system for. Right. And Kenny and his wife, I'm sorry, um, Councilman. <laughs> And his wife have been very uh, involved in that already, so I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that, but I'd like um, to set a meeting. Yep, so very much interested in uh, setting up a meeting for that. Uh, several individuals have approached us, me and my wife, about revital revitalizing that effort. Um, Community-wise, community-wide, there has been a outpour of interest in getting our young children back in one playing football um, in whatever fashion that may be, right? Um, knowing that the leagues have changed since COVID, um, knowing that where we are, every place we attend is essentially a travel team, right? Like anywhere we go, we're traveling. So even if we aren't a travel team, you're basically a travel team. Right. I mean, we just because of our location. Correct. So the the thought process is figure out which organization we can be partnered with, whether it's like tied with the organization that King George uses, Southern Maryland, whatever the, the organization we pick, right, um, to make sure that the kids in our community have that going forward. Because not only is it beneficial for the kids, you know, and the parents to have something for them to do Saturday mornings, it's always, it was always a great thing. But not having it is putting a burden on our small school of not having that starting so young, right? So just like my kids, when they played from five years old all the way through, our JV and varsity football teams had the benefit of them learning these sports that young. So when they got through a varsity level, Everybody knew what everybody was doing. There wasn't right, no they guesswork. Goals, I knew the stuff they knew what they were doing. Team. They knew the process. It's not like they're coming out for JV and just starting playing. Not saying that they all do, but right. when, when we have a school the size that we have, we usually have to beg, borrow, steal the amount of kids to come out to play. Whereas most schools, you know, Fredericksburg, that area that you know we play but outside of our conference. But, you know, they have to cut 20 kids to make the 20 best kids kind of things. You know, it's this is a little harder for our schools to compete if we don't have that institutional knowledge of being starting young. So can I ask a question just in regard to any of this? Do do or has there been any discussion in any of the Barry and Dunn stuff about this? Yes. Yes, but it, I'm not sure it'll show up as a as an important element because it fits in with conversation they were having that included football, soccer, American well, everything. Football, soccer. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's gotcha. part of a larger conversation. But I will say we have been also been in conversation with Dr. Addo um, and well, obviously members of the school board about um, having support in terms of finding fields to practice mm -hmm. on and we do have that support. And the other conversation we had, actually Lisa, did I have this conversation with you at work about about, I did, institutional um, purchasing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we may be able to lend some support in terms of finding wholesale prices on things like that. So, well, is this the kind of thing that, you know, that would be worth our while calling a separate like work session that just revolved around that kind of thing? Because again, playing devil's advocate of this. You know, if we support and do something like this, I always feel like, you know, we're getting better at it, but that we need to have the other programs that are meeting the needs of 
our entire community so that we need to come forward and say, okay, if we're supporting this and doing this, we're also doing this. And I think we've done a great job of, of really beefing up, hey, we're doing the other things that involve other people that aren't going to play football or cheer or whatever. So I think we're getting to that point where this conversation could be very easy and plausible just because of all the things we've created that are creating balance. Yeah. My two cents on that would be that we go ahead because uh, Explorers is off and running. So I feel like if we give our blessing to a group of interested volunteers to take this on, um, we can we can dictate what our involvement will be. Um, but I think it's a good idea to just go ahead and get started because you know the, the summer season is almost here. Too. Now I get all that, Sally, but I guess my thing is you know expectations run high with people. And, and, you know, we're in a small town and telephone works like this and the tech, you know, so, so for us to have an official meeting or something where, where capacity wise, what we're able to do, which I mean, 9% of we are means you or the town. I mean, I'm just saying it. that's the reality of where we are right now. And, you know, I hate for 12 people to come in and think that that means we're going to set up this, this, and this. Yeah when all we really can really do is help facilitate registration and taking the money. You know, I don't even know if taking the money is even an issue with how we are. Because, you know, we haven't even crossed that bridge of having anything that people really pay for yeah. in, in yeah. what we're doing right now. So there are lots of layers to this. You know, I'm all about exploring it, but I feel like we need to do it. And, and I get the time crunch because fall's going to be right here. And that's not to say that it couldn't happen. But I think, you know, having the conversation where it's almost like an MOU where everyone's expectations are set from the beginning so that no one's disappointed in this. I mean, I know it's disappointing enough that it doesn't even exist right now. Um, Do you so want make, to head and set with you? I mean, Kenny, you know more than us right now about any. I mean, so part of this could be, without having an official meeting, you could have a subcommittee of one. Some, someone on, on, the, on the commission attend the meeting of the 12 or whoever those individuals are. It doesn't have to be an official meeting mm -hmm. here, right? Or it, it could be here, but it doesn't have to be an official Parks and Rec Advisory Commission. It could be you designate you or by whoever as a subcommittee of the CBYA authority. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And then you have the meeting and that person reports back at the next parks and rec meeting and say, this is what was discussed. This is what we're planning to do going forward, or it needs more time. This was just an initial thing. We'll be back at the following meeting to provide more information rather than having a individual meeting on that where all three of you sit there and sure. really nothing that makes happens. sense too. Right. Any thoughts? No, I'm, I'm willing to attend at least to do the first fact planning. Thank you. Awesome. I'm asked to be on a Monday or Wednesday. No, I'm sorry. Oh, Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday. You're available Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah. Most Tuesday, Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Unless we have games and Thursday gets filled up. Yeah, that's true. As long as it's not next week. Yeah, Tuesdays are awful for me. Actually. Okay. All right. Thank you. So then let's put that on our agenda for next time when we come back to meet. Because again, I, I understand how it needs to happen yesterday. Well, to be honest, I do have people already contacting me. So it's not a, a secret anymore. <laughs> that gotcha. looking at it. Good. Okay. Moving on. Uh, agenda and items. Um, Meeting with the mayor. Do you want to do it like a little two minute? Oh, I mean, I guess I'll know how you can talk about the capacity of that because we it wasn't a official because we did not have full. I mean, we, it wasn't because it was a ten by multiple. It was just a couple people. Um, it's really to discuss our concerns about our clarity of the world's responsibilities of the uh, commission. And to kind of get her view, she even really understood what our concerns were. And I think she, you know, I think it was a little bit eye opening for her. But I, bottom line is, before we are going to go forward with codifying bylaws or anything else, or responsibilities, we're going to allow this um, 
the consultants to come back with the parks and rec plan and that will help probably steer a little more of what our role and capacity is because they may know more as well you guys are really trying to do something that really isn't possible or this is kind of the lane you should be in and that's really all you need to do and we're that way we're not beating our head against the wall so we're going to allow that process to take its place and in the meantime you know work through the current um, activities that we have and then when we're finished or when they're finished take that you know populate what they provide to us into our bylaws and um, see if we can get those codified and informed. Sorry, someone's commenting on that. <laughs> okay, uh, next thing is a social media posting schedule. Okay, I talked to um, Marissa Potts about that. And she is going to work with me on seeing that I can see the social media posting schedule. And while I won't necessarily be setting it, my role is to do things that are time sensitive that she hasn't got on the schedule or to handle things that are like emergency postings that Heather's not doing. She handles fix, but, um, you know, something like a water main broke in the park and, you know, it's flooded. So, um, as far as how I'm going to get that information, we haven't worked out the details of that. We had a meeting this morning, but because of the situation, we didn't <laughs> we didn't get to finish it. Uh, so we'll we started the conversation about how we're going to be able to share that information. But she's very interested in sharing the information. She handles all of the whole package, the whole enchilada. My role is pretty specifically limited to parks and rec and anything that's like I said, time sensitive things that come up. Um, so what, I, what we can do as far as Parks and Rec is concerned is I can actually create a calendar, which I have done, but I haven't sent it as far into the future as I want to. But I can create a calendar in uh, the Parks and Rec Facebook page, and I can make all of you admins in that. So you can go and look at the calendar. You can determine how that's looking. If you want to add things, if you want to say, for instance, Farmer's Market or things like that, we can tuck things in there in the calendar, and then I've been doing some tutorials on what's a good time to post what kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I'm learning. <laughs> this is kind of new. This scheduling part is a little bit new to me. Um, I know that there are certain things that need to go on at certain times. Weekend events are posted differently than weekday events and so on. So, But the, the, social media is not the only thing that we use. We also post bills. Um, flyers, and we also use the school's dojo, and um, we also use Nextdoor, mm -hmm. and we also use, uh, I use personal emails when it's something that, like, is critical, like these meetings, things like that, and then I calendar a lot of things. Is the radio station being utilized? And, sorry, yes, obviously, okay. the radio station I use a lot, because <laughs> 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 yes, so, right. I have my microphone at work, so if you want to come, and record something at work with them. There you go. <laughs> I'll put you on the radio. Wonderful. Um, okay, uh, high school student participation with Parks and Rec Commission. High school. Oh, we have one uh, application, and I'm going to go by the school later this week and see if there have been any more applications turned in. We had one more interested person that said they were going to turn their application in this week. So, um, I think we'll have somebody, somebody very good. I don't know who it's going to be yet, but we've got some interested kids, and they're enthusiastic, and so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Especially now that we know, because it's a paid position for the summer, that um, the parks and rec position is being financed. That, that means okay, so this is money going to be direct, working directly with you. Yes. Too. Okay, so yes. it's not just somebody that's part of it. There are four positions open. Um, what they we have we discussed maybe rotating them, but the, the so this is with parks and recreation, not with the commission. Uh, not with the commission, but they can okay. work. That's, that's what I was yeah, yeah. That's that's it too, because we had thought about always that we needed a representative from Green Space to be a part of this. Oh, are we talking that. about? You said internship. No, we said no. It says on high school on here. student participation with the parks and rec advisory okay. commission. I'm so sorry. I went straight to intern. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I will have a paid intern this summer. Okay. So, there's Love that. It. What? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. As far as having someone on the commission, 
have not done anything with that. Yeah, I don't know if there's necessarily that we're going to have them on because, again, that kind of leads to the bylaws, but I think let's right. at least have a representative. And if they're going to have interns, I mean, that they could be go padded. For the summer, lack of better, Yeah, with lack of better terms, like they could be carrying information back and forth some, in some way or manner. Well, so yeah. you only have one meeting a month. You have your intern come to the meeting. Absolutely. Exactly. And talk about the things that the school. That's good, all right. Have, have the kids, you know, have them talk yeah. about things that the kids want to see in the community yep. going forward. Perfect. Straight and that's, yeah. 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 Exactly. And that, and that facilitates our having our NGO slash partners, MOU things collaborate with the Parks and Rec Commission. So we would just have a student body paid in exactly. that would that's a great provide their information. Good, good. Perfect. Okay, 11, council recommendations. I mean, the two things that I kind of see is um, uh, we need a new member. So we need to make sure that that's posted, put out there. Correct. Letting everyone know yeah. that. And then the only other thing would be is, and do we need to make a recommendation that we move the tables? We would like to recommend as a Parks and Rec Advisory Board that the tables that are currently sitting unused up on Town Hill be moved temporarily, and that it's stated that it's temporarily because the plan has not been made, but to Eleanor Park for the start of the season so that there is activity and that it is um, viewed as a community gathering space for all. It looks like an active park. Exactly. Um, I, I don't know if this would be addressed to all council members, um, seeing how it's part of the infrastructure, public works slash whatever, I can discuss that with the town manager Perfect. and they can work with public works to find out the best solution for that. Um, I don't really know if that's a, a function of council itself. Sure, okay, but it tables. I mean, that's, okay. like, that's a function of the town. Place, yeah. exactly. But I will uh, definitely reach out to the town manager which would then public works and have that conversation to see about doing that. Sure, because we do, and I would like you to convey too, that we do understand that this adds another layer to public works because then it is picnic tables. You have to cut around sure. on flat rate grass place. And it will also mean that you will at least have to have two to four permanent trash cans there right. because if you're encouraging people to picnic. Yep, um, I have trash and, cans listed as, um, and granted, as part of that too, I mean, we're just at the point where there should be a, even in these beginning stages, if it is recognized as a park, even though there's not parking, even though there's not necessarily ADA accessibility, even though there's not running water, there should be a portalet there or something there that is monitored if it is going to be recognized from here till eternity as a park. It needs to start somewhere in Port Electra Way Start. Understood. I, I left something off my report. Sure. I'm just going to stick this in. That's okay. I got to talk to, I was invited to be the guest speaker at the audience this month. Nice. Month. And it was great. They wanted me to talk about Parks and Rec. So, okay. Well, that's wonderful because, again, I think, you know, in, in our long term sustainability plan, um, CB Explorers, like Debbie's doing, um, BAM, once it's established itself as a true nonprofit, um, the CB Green Space, all these things, you know, from the, the beginning of when this board was put together and the whole concept was there, it, it was never about um, taking away from all these groups that have already and have always kept everything going here that a Parks and Rec department would do. I think we're very blessed that we have entities that are still willing to raise their own money and create those things and, and, and do them. So I think we, as a commission or a Parks and Rec department, need to find um, better ways to streamline some of the things they're already doing and to focus on some of these recognized collaborations. Um, moving forward because we are a small town and there's you know sally or a staff of and maybe a one and a half this this summer and part of that's going to be a teaching role for you in reality i mean we all love interns and things and if you could get someone excited about that but it's not someone who's going to come in necessarily and 
do the work. I mean, you know, again, and, that, and that's great. I mean, that's okay. That's, um, anyway. I'm looking forward to it. I have a background as a teacher, so it's a good thing. Sure, sure. Um, and again, I think as, as Mike had said, our meeting with whatever Barry and Dunn decides for our town is, is going to be very beneficial when we sit down and, and go through the nuts and bolts of what should have happened. We can't go backwards. We don't want to go backwards. We're all going forwards, but what is going to be happening next and what that should look like and, and what our roles and what your role is and, and what it all truly um, gels itself into. Right. So, right. But thank you for all the hard work that you're doing now and, and for navigating uncharted waters because I think that's the whole thing we've all been doing um, from the inception of this. Does anybody have anything else? Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for coming. Um, this meeting is dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.